Good morning YouTube. Um, I was looking at my old videos the other day and I realised it's been almost two years to the day that I did my first birds going over, um, my first summer garden tour and I thought I'd do another tour today um, on the sort of, sort of anniversary nearly and um, you can see what's changed and what we've done and different things and um, so it's early in the morning here um, husband and dogs are still in bed so that's good it'll be nice and quiet and um, I'll start the tour where I started it last time and I'll try and do the same route this will be from memory and um, there's no wind up today so we shouldn't get any problems with the mic and um, just background noise chickens birds I can't do anything about that lots of people you know comment about they hear the birds and we do have a lot of birds here living in the pine forest and obviously my chickens are doing their thing so anyway we'll get on with the tour now and um, I hope you enjoy it and uh, yeah so let's give it a go so let's start at the front here. Um, this has changed quite a bit. Um, if you remember, we had these bushes were quite large and I ended up cutting them down and um, well, cutting them back considerably and doing some underplanting in them to make them, um, you know, just make it look a little bit better out the front here. And also um, I used to have big hydrangeas in these pots. I took them out, planted them somewhere else and I've just put low growing flowers in there or annuals and I've also added the hanging baskets out the front here. So this side's very similar um, again these big laurel bushes were right up to the window up there so I've cut them down um, i going to keep them trimmed and we're just having a bit of under planting in there as well and then this is the east side of the house so this side of the house faces east so it doesn't get a lot of sun because of the pine forest behind me um, but this bank over here which is relatively new um, this one was put in about three years ago and um, yeah this is facing well it's actually facing the house but behind it it is south so um, we've planted quite extensively in here Here's that gorgeous um, red fountain plant that I got. Um, I've had that several years and I'm quite proud of that one. Um, that was a feature of the plant a few weeks ago in the quarter line uh, episode. And then we come down, as you can see, that beautiful um, castor oil is looking beautiful now. Really happy with that one. It did struggle to start with, but it is now starting to um, find its roots and take off nicely. I've got lots of summer planting with dahlias, etc. in this bank. And um, yeah, it's starting to look really good now. Just coming away nicely. Starting to get established. You can see down there now at the middle of the screen, that is the um, bear's breeches that we... Um, I featured in my last feature plant video and that's doing really good. So here we are down the bottom half of it. Um, so lots of lovely dahlias and other plants, bits and pieces. I said before, I think I said in that video, I don't really um, you know, have any kind of plan. I just sort of pop things in and um, you know, they either work or they don't. So then as we pan around, we'll come to the West Bank. Um, and this bank was here originally. There was a lot of planting done by the previous owner, but it was all natives. So um, I've sort of put some color in, in amongst all the natives. So here we are down there now. This is um, a tree peony that's really taken off this year. I think that's down to the extra watering that I've been giving it recently. And um, if we pan around, you'll see I've got a nice, beautiful loop in there. Um, those roses that I was going to get my husband to cut out, um, well, I think I asked him to cut them out, and he actually just cut them down. And I'm glad now that he did, because they're starting to flower and come in and do a lot of bright colours there, which I really enjoy. I've got a huge, great um, clump of uh, Mombrisha there. Um, must keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't go berserk. And if I walk slightly over here, 
I'm not walking too much in this video because I find it does a jerky picture and it's not very nice to watch. Um, so those, those two massive hebes there, you can see this one and this one. They're growing out over the path. Um, they're a little bit bored at the back, as you can see there. So we're considering taking these out this year. Um, and Or, you know, we could try and trim them back, but I think they're just bored behind and they'll start to look rather ugly. So we're just thinking about taking those out. So that's a, that'll be a project for later in the year. So if I slowly pan around, you'll see that, um, to give you some perspective of where I am. So as we come around, that's the pond and the pergola around the back of the pond. And there's the patio. And here's the weeping cherry. My husband recently gave this one a lovely haircut. Um, so it's looking far nicer now. Um, much easier for me to cut the lawn underneath it. As you can see the lawn was starting to die off where it wasn't getting any light. So, um, so that's a good thing. I'm glad he's done that. So we've got beautiful um, pink lily there. Just try and get it in the shot. Can you see it? That's looking really great. Quite pleased with that one. And then we come around. Great big hosta there. Got a pontilia there. Um, oh, there's loads of different plants in here. Tons of them. So I'll try and walk. I hope it's not too jerky on film for you. Um, so as we come along this part, we've got a rose there. Dahlia. Got a big patch of daylilies here, which um, will be flowering soon. This big patch here. Um, got a lovely fuchsia at the back there. So yeah, hopefully they'll be all flowering. We pan around. Come to the end of the bank. Walk up there. I'm sorry if it's wobbly. I just <laughs> my tablet's quite heavy. Um, it's a 12.2 one, so yeah, it's quite heavy to hold up. Um, but yeah, I'll do my best. So we're coming around now to the as it leads around to the front of the pond. But before we go around there, I'd just like to discuss this wedding cake tree. Um, those of you who watch my video regularly will realise that I had a little bit of issue with this one at the beginning of the year um, and I did send out an SOS video but I'm glad to say I didn't really do anything. I just let it go and waited to see and as you can see this side is recovering. It's recovering, it's not at this stage but it's definitely recovering and um, I'm really happy about that because um, that's one of my favourite trees. And over here, we walk over here, you'll see that this used to have a lilac in there, but um, unfortunately that did die back. Um, I don't know why, so we've actually replaced that now, and this is a liquid amber tree. Um, looks very small and vulnerable at the moment, but um, yeah, we'll, we've got that one in because uh, I love the colours in the autumn. And somebody mentioned about these stones around the bottom of the, the tree. The reason they're there is they do help keep the moisture in. We have very, very dry summers here in New Zealand, so um, that's the reason they're there. But I am thinking of swapping this out, thinking of getting some sort of edging material here and just filling it with um, bark mulch and putting some plantings at the bottom. I think that will look quite nice. So here's the start of the um, along the front of the pond. If we go over and look at the roses, haven't been spectacular this year. I remember last year they were absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, this year with all the rain that we've recent well we had at the beginning of the summer, they have suffered quite considerably. But I see I'm getting a second flush coming on them, so hopefully they'll uh, they will give me some blooms before the uh, before they go over. And then we come over here to the pond. Um, this is my holding pond. So this is where I keep all my spare pond plants. And um, they're all doing really well. That Saracena down there, I'll just zoom in, was covered in white flies. See, it's got a little bit on it again now, so I need to give it another spray. But that's where that one lives all year round.
So we've got some cosmos. This large clump of irises, that was another um, feature plant a while back now, a few episodes ago. And um, it's getting very large and um, just too big really for there. So I'm going to get my husband to take that out. We'll split it up and we'll put it somewhere else in the garden. We don't throw anything away. We recycle and uh, reuse. Oh, looks like my husband's doing some fishing on the... I don't know what he's doing there. <laughs> Probably trying to catch some fish for whatever reason. Anyway, this path here, this chamomile path, has been very successful. We used to have stepping stumps in there, but they rotted away. Um, so I pulled them out and I really encouraged the chamomile to grow across. I put in extra little bits and that's great because we can walk on it and it smells nice. And yeah, it looks really good. The pyrethum there is looking gorgeous as well. These are quite pretty. These are calla lilies. I've got a few dotted around in the garden. This is lovely. There was a hot, large clump of irises in here as well, but that was removed and we just put a wallflower in there for now. This is quite an attractive plant, although it's going over now. I don't know its botanical name, but it's called fishing rod plant and that just gives big long sprays of... Um, pale, sort of very pale pink white flowers. So if we keep walking. Looking forward to this tiger lily or tiger lily. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. Looking forward to this one flowering. Looks gorgeous when it does. There's another one of those color lilies, a yellow one. Coming along here, the peonies were a disaster this year, again because of the weather. But this is doing exceptional this year. This is um, a massive clump, in actual fact it's three separate plants in there um, of daylilies and they're looking superb, really pleased with those. Uh, next to it we used to have a um, lavender in here but um, it got all woody and messy so I took that out and I've put these, just recently put these couple of plants in to um, just fill that gap. We come down to the bottom of the garden. So we've got another calla lily there, a beautiful orange one. Really like that one, it's very bright. And as we pan around, there's the orchid house. And then this bed here has undergone some changes. That was a big, big patch of carpet roses. Um, we removed those and we've put the hydrangeas from the front door in there. So we recycled them. We got some spireas and we've just underplanted it with um, some bedding plants. So, and it's under the wisteria. And as you can see, the wisteria is trying to give us another flush of flowers, which is brilliant. So this is the back of the pond, discarded dog toys. We, <laughs> we got them everywhere, I'm afraid, <laughs> for our three dogs. Um, so the path's going to be a little noisy and I'm going to try and not let it wobble too much. Um, so this has recently been trimmed back down through here. Um, it was getting a bit over the path, so my husband trimmed it all back, which is great. We haven't attempted this Sharon Rose yet because um, it's just coming into flower, but that will need a trim back soon. Keep walking. So the um, Agapanthus is just coming into flower now, which is pretty... This is a beautiful pale blue one. You can get vibrant blue ones and I'd like to get one of those one day but they get very very large. You've got to have a large garden for these big agapanthus. You can get smaller ones, um, you know dwarf ones but uh, yeah most of them are quite large. They grow prolifically out here. They're almost like a weed to be honest. Everybody's got agapanthus. This rose is gorgeous. Um, really enjoy this rose. It's got beautiful scent and um, it is a beautiful vibrant pink colour. So we have um, some dahlias up there that I've tried to stake up. They're looking a bit 
like they flopped over again so I need to do that. Um, this big clump of um, geranium is looking great growing out over the path but we'll give that a trim when it's finished flowering. So some more agapanthus here. This is beautiful. Um, it's all but in full flower now. It's a jasmine um, and it, it smells absolutely gorgeous, especially in the evenings. I've got lots of pentamens dotted around as well. This is one of my favourites, this purple one. Um, this one actually um, does uh, really well there. It's got um, I've given it a haircut this year so it's come back nice and fresh and new looking which is great and then if we pan around it's another big jasmine there so they're either side of the pond and this is the seating area I haven't sat in this area this year yet for, for a bit so let's do that so just here on um, as you go into the bridge I've had to give this Shiraz a bit of a trim back because it was um, growing out over the entrance to the bridge and um, yeah that's okay. So let's go on the bridge and have a look at the pond. So as you can see lots and lots of lilies looking quite full with lilies. Might have to take them out and split them up this year. But that's okay. Um, no lilies are open at the moment because um, it's not bright enough. And then you pan around, you see this is the um, front of the patio. Back around, you'll see all the fish down below me because they're all waiting to be fed. They hang around here every morning and I feed them from the bridge. Another plant that I'm really happy with this year is um, this Gunnera. Um, it's doing exceptional this year. It's uh, looking fantastic. It's right next to this massive flax. Um, so I'm glad it's starting to look bigger. Um, as you can see, this flax is really tall. Look how tall it is, because this lovely red seed heads are up there. This is the top of the pergola, which is eight foot tall, and yeah, so it's doing really well. Also, another thing that's looking quite nice is this um, tree fern. They're really taking off again this year, so um, that's fantastic. So back out on the path now. So we're coming up to where the hostas are ahead of me. And um, they're doing well. They love it there. They get lots of shade and um, yeah, they do, they do very well in this bed. There wasn't much else that I could put in there and they seem to really enjoy it. So I'm at the back of the pond now. So if I slowly pan around, you'll see the gunnera. Huge great leaves. Just love it. Beautiful specimen plant and the uh, tree ferns which are doing really well really well again they didn't do that well when I first put them in but um, they certainly are now so we've got a really nice bright berberus there it's nice contrast to the dark acer next to it and this acer is doing exceptional as well really really pleased with that one So we're at the um, bottom end of the west bank and I'll go around the back of the bank so you can see behind there. So we're going to walk through this path here. Take my time because it's the jerky house, not a very good picture. So this bank here, the back of this big west bank, we've worked on quite hard at the beginning of the year. Um, I've planted quite a few different other plants in here and tidied it up. I've got this massive patch of um, Japanese anemone here 
which um, it's getting so much more light now um, due to the fact that the woods have been taken down. So I'm expecting some good show of flowers on this one this year because other years, although it's here, it's never really flowered that well. Um, but yeah, we should get quite a few flowers on that one this year. So that's, uh, that's good. And as you can see, so much more light at the back here now much much better so that um iris i was talking to you that big clump of iris so if my husband split it up and we've put it in amongst here obviously we cut it down to replant it um so hopefully that will come back next year this area straight ahead is doing really well now we're also irrigating this more regular so um yeah i think it's doing so much better So if you look down through there, you can see plants that I've dotted in here, there and everywhere. So hopefully they'll take off this year and we'll have um, the back of the bank will start looking really nice. So I've put a few hydrangeas and that in here, they'll, uh, they'll do well. Lots of shade loving plants. We've got the um, woodland violets, Jerusalem sage there as well, that's doing well. Rhododendrons, hostas, whatever will enjoy it's, uh, the aspect here. Got a lovely Brunnera there, really, really pleased with that one love Brunneras. got a few of those now. Also got a big patch of anemone here. They're doing well. They're taking off. They're looking great. Lots of hookeras. Hookeras here and here. Oh, there's loads of them um, because they're, uh, they do well at the back here as well. There's some more here and here and there. <laughs> Work with what, you know, put in what you know will work. Um, don't waste your money on something you think might work and it doesn't because um, chances are it won't. <laughs> so we're coming up to um, some lovely hydrangeas. They've recently been put in. So this one's really nice. I really like this one. It's a sort of pendulous one. Um, the flowers are just fully opening now. And um, yeah, I'll go in actually and you can see the name of this one. It's a really nice one. I've never seen a hydrangea like this before. And when I saw it, I thought, oh yeah, we'll get that one. Um, but it's it's got beautiful, beautiful, big, showy things of flowers. It's gorgeous. Really, really like that one. And here's another hydrangea. It is actually very, very pale pink, but it's showing white on the screen. But uh, yeah, hopefully that will take off. Got a really big patch of periwinkle, which is going to stay there until I can um, get more plants and take the periwinkle out slowly. There's a beautiful um, lace cap hydrangea there, which is just coming into flower. I'm um, just showing its flower heads, but that is a very late flowering one. And then um, more plants here. There is a few natives behind here, like these, this green stuff. I don't know the name of this, but that is really taken off and doing well. So we're back round to the start of the West Bank now. So I'll go the other way and go around the other part of the garden so you can see that. Thought I'd check out the black planters on the way. So they've recently been replanted, re shall we say, a few plants taken out scuffy stuff taken out and some more bedding plants put in so they're starting to look really good now um, we sort of swap that out or I do each year put a bit in take a bit out um, add a bit of fertilizer and um, yeah so they're doing well another thing that's picked up a bit now is the um, marigolds around the front of the patio um, they weren't looking too good to start with but my husband's now started feeding them with um, 
some horse manure that he puts through the irrigation lines and as you can see they're really starting to take off a bit now so that's that's really good. This is the very front of the property or back depending on your perspective so here's the orchid house on my right and um, this area has changed a bit as well since that last video two years ago we used to have a massive tree here with this blue pot is that's all been removed now We've got a, another bear's breeches and I've planted up below that so um, yeah that's doing well. The sweet pea that's going up the garden arch is starting to go over a bit now um, but yeah I'll leave it there for the time being. And um, also the uh, clematis that we've got on the other side is really really taking over the garden arch. And another area that's changed quite a bit is just in here. Um, this used to be full of like old carpet roses that really weren't doing very well. So we took them out and I've put some things in. So I've got Shasta Daisy, we've got the, um, the good old reliable fuchsia and a few under plantings of different bits and pieces. The Fajoa bush went in here as well. And then we've just got some dahlias and um, various other bits and pieces in here. So if I walk through the arch, coming up, this is my husband's vegetable patch, the other side of this fence, and um, we've got our spalier pears going down through here, which we're really, really happy with. Um, yeah, they're coming away nicely now. Mr. Chicken. trying to keep it stable. <laughs> this is a beautiful um, grizzlinia. It started off variegated and I see parts of it has gone reverted back to um, green but you can just cut that off. So if we look um, down through here is the pathway that leads down through to the other part of the woods and just to give you some perspective there's the orchid house there, so I have to come from that orchid house along this path around these espaliers and right there is the orchid shade house which is, they're doing fantastic in there. And we had some spare pencilmans and some dahlias and my husband doesn't throw anything away so we planted a row of them along here and they are doing fantastic. So they may stay there or I may, you know, if I need a plant to pop in the garden, I'll just come and get one from here. So really, really pleased with them. They're doing brilliant. So we'll walk down through here. So this area has really taken off since that last, or the, the, year, the video two years ago. Um, there's not so much color in this bed at the moment on the right here. Um, but there are there is lots of colour to come. We've got lots of dahlias that's still yet to open and um, yeah, they should do really, really well. And we've got lots of colour on the other side with the good old dahlias. I tried tying them up a bit last night. They were drooping over, but I don't think I've been that successful with that. But anyway, so along here, there are lots and lots of different things in here. Um, pencilmans, laurels, rhododendrons. Um, I've also got a really nice hydrangea in here called strawberries and cream. And that's it there. Really like that. It's a bit like a lace cap one, I suppose. But that's doing well. It seems to like it there. And that beautiful blue of the salvia behind. Just gorgeous. Absolutely love the colour of that. And pan around. A big dahlia there that's yet to flower. Big pont poncetia, or, no, not poncetia, sorry, pontilia. It's about to flower. And this dahlia. We did have a big um, variegated red and pink berberus in here. Well, we still got it. This is it. But we've recently trimmed it back because it was getting a bit um, bullyish. So we've taken that down a bit. And I've got a really big. Um, tall dahlia here about to flower so yeah and some more rhododendrons 
and another Pontilia there. More dahlias. This um, Acer here is taken off really, really well on the corner here. Um, really happy with that one. Um, yeah, I'm just, I, I love Acers. There's another little one in the back here, so hopefully that will grow up as well. And I think there's another one further up. Yeah, there it is. You can just see the top of it there, so they're slowly growing up. This is quite a nice little attractive plant here. This is a, um, oh, she says, lost my mind. <laughs> no, I am lost my mind. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, I've got a couple of those in the garden and they're very pretty. This is the poor old Canterbury Bells. They really did take a suffering this year. Um, yeah, they didn't do well at all. And another strawberries and cream hydrangea I'm really really pleased with that one it's looking fantastic really really pretty and that's right next to another berberus which has been trimmed backdrop of a big rhododendron and right back there is one of those day lilies that we split up and um, put back there eventually I'd like to take this um, this netting down um, so, you know, it opens it up so at the back the plants can go, at, you know, we can look, walk around the other side of it and look at the, the border. But um, for now, we're just going to leave it up to give it protection so everything gets established. The Rangarenga lilies have been very successful this year, so they look good. And then on this side, we've got... Um, more rhododendrons, more um, fuchsias and things that work in this area because this is quite a challenging area here. It's under the pines again, so we have to put in, you know, what works best for that part of the garden. This is a beautiful rhododendron. It's never flowered. I've got two or three of them in the garden, but, you know, the leaves are very attractive, so it can stay purely based on its leaves. And then if we walk up through here, we're coming around to the woodly bit, the wooden woodland bit at the back. And, um, and that probably concludes the tour for this year. So thank you for watching. Um, I do appreciate all my subscribers and the comments. And um, yeah, we're back round to the bank. Okay, so thank you for watching my um, summer tour of January 2019. Um, please like or dislike and subscribe and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.